Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here from the LGFA. We're on another Zoom call today, and I'm delighted to be joined by Sarah Rowe from uh, County Mayo, well-known footballer and Lidl ambassador, and her mum, Gráinne, viral sensation, internet sensation. How are you, folks? <laughs> Good, thank you. Good. Great to <laughs> have you on. Well, great to have you on, and thanks for coming on. Um, I know you're busy, uh, flat out at the moment. Um, some some family stuff happening that for you as well. So hope all is well in your world, uh, folks. Sarah, the Lidl moves for twenty by twenty campaign, and your role in it is something I want to talk to you about. Um, very very popular campaign. It's got a lot of traction. Um, no proving, just moving. Very very nice. Tell us a bit more, Sarah. Yeah, I think the campaign got a lot of attraction because it's just about your, you know, your everyday person, what you're going to do every day for the rest of your life. It's not about sports people. It's about habit changing that you can do until forevermore. So it's about finding what works for you. And, you know, like it could be as simple as just going for a walk for 10 minutes every day, a bit of yoga, you know, whatever that looks like for you is going to be different for everyone. So I think it's a, it's a really good... Um, insight to what kind of exercise you could do and I think Little Moves have a questionnaire where you can fill that out and find out what exercise works for you so I think that's a really good platform and that's live until the end of October so that's definitely a place to go if you would like to start your new habit. Yeah a lot of people are getting very much engaged with this campaign Sarah. Yeah, a lot of people are, I think, and uh, I think mum has helped that along the way because, you know, she's been very relatable throughout the whole thing. And, you know, mothers, sometimes people say to you, like, oh, like, I don't know why I'd exercise because, like, you know, I've ne I was never sporty. And it's, it's not about that. It's that everyone deserves the gift of exercise and especially the feeling that you get after exercise. And I think since COVID's happened, everyone's realised the impact that a physical activity can have on your not only your physical health, but also your mental health. So I think it was just the perfect time the campaign came out of as well. Uh, Grania, how did you get roped into all of this? <laughs> oh, very slyly. Uh, what, I didn't realise what I was getting in for at the beginning. Um, I was asked about two years ago to do something like this, and I said, no, I wouldn't do it, because I'm actually very sh um, camera shy. And I feel uncomfortable, but I mean, I've got over Watch, it. Run that by me again, Grania. I'm actually very camera shy. She's not so camera shy anymore. She's still not, I've she's got just over it. Embraced it. I've got over it, yeah, but it wouldn't be my thing, really. But um, I have embraced it. No, I just wanted to support Sarah more than anything and just to kind of partake in it. And I kind of have enjoyed it now as it happens. So um, this was a big step for you, Grania, just, to, you know, to, to lose that camera shyness and to, to embrace a challenge like this. It was huge, huge for me. And I didn't really exercise on a regular basis before this, so it was huge. It was a big undertaking Brilliant. for me, but I have to say I've really enjoyed it. Well done. What, what have you taken I from it so far and learned from it, Grania? Uh, well, I have really enjoyed the walking, uh, more for my mental health rather than my physical health. You know, I find it very relaxing in the fresh air, and I find my body is more limber, obviously. Is that the word? Limber. Um, loose. Um, so I, but I've enjoyed it, and I think it's uh, going forward. Um, it's something I think I would, I definitely will continue. Maybe not seven days a week, but a few days a week. <laughs> Good, Grania. Have, have your friends and your peers um, noticed it as well, and have some of them come on board as well? Yes, um, a lot of people actually that I wouldn't normally talk to, maybe even in town, even even do my shopping. People say you're going walking today, Grania, um, and you know they've said they've enjoyed watching us. And I, I think women are other women. That I wouldn't normally maybe wouldn't normally chat to me or chat to me in town. It's quite funny. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah. And That's all, super. I'll go about it, yeah. Well, Sarah, are they bringing the autograph books and all now, are they? <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone is saying. I was like, Mom, people are only following me to see you. It's not even about me. I was like, she's the, she's the main attraction star of the show yeah. at the minute. So um, yeah. she's even wearing a hairband that she got sent out to her. So she's actually turned into an influencer yeah. along the way. Katie Super. Kate has sent her out a wow. hairband um, over the last few days. So I was like, it's it's funny. I suppose she actually has really had an impact. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of women are like, I've been yeah. at underage football games and stuff, and a lot of women have came up to me and said, "Oh, your mother is cracking us up," but like she actually has inspired us to get out and walk with kids and yeah. stuff like that. So it really has been. It's just kind yeah. of normalized the whole thing and brought everyone down to earth and like I think it, yeah. yeah and we had it, as we said we had so much good chats and you Brilliant. know all the topics that we're covering every every time we go walking so like walking isn't always just about that exercise side of things it's very social, social as well 
Brilliant. So you must be really proud of her, Sarah, to, to do something like that and to, to break down a barrier that, you know, a, a self-confessed barrier, which is, you know, when you talk about mental health and, and being able to break through barriers, that's a big thing for your mum. Yeah, definitely. Like, mum is honestly the toughest client she, you'd ever come across because she's like, she, she can be quite stubborn, yeah. Stubborn. You know, I didn't get, I didn't get it from the wind, but um, <laughs> she's quite stubborn in her ways. Like with exercise, she was saying, oh, no, I love you. No, I'm just happy now with the cup of tea and the Western people in the corner. And, you know, you go off for your walk, but I'm going to sit there now with my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> that was really, I would be doing jobs as well. Jobs. Jobs. Housework. Always jobs. Housework. Pick, picking up weeds. Every time I look out that window, she's bending down. Pick Garling, weeds. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure they just pop up overnight and she's, at the garden constantly yeah. so things like that she'd be like no no i have enough to be doing jobs, doing. <laughs> jobs 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 so but, she's but, always but you, doing. you know when you go out and you do a bit of weeding right and um I'm a little bit older than you are, Sarah, and um, I, I'm 43 now, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the hamstrings the next day. You talk about that, you know, being a little bit more nimble and a bit more loose. Um, the walk, and then it, it aids every other aspect of your life, it, including pulling those weeds as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, I found you. You know, you know, like I'm, I'm good, more than ten years older than you. I'm even come down the stairs the more my knees would have been so before this. That seems to be gone now. So definitely has helped physically as well, Brilliant. which I'm very grateful for. And I need to do now as I'm getting, get, uh, going forward, getting older, you need to be more conscious of that, I think. Uh, I suppose so. there are, one, of the, one of the big things when you take up a habit is to sustain it. So yes. how confident are you that you can, you can do that now, that you'll keep this up long term? Uh, I, I would definitely, I have full intention to keep it up. I don't think I've been honest. I won't do it seven days a week. If I do four or five days, I would be happy with that for me. That's my intention. Sarah, when they came to you with the concept, um, what did you think of it? Or, or how much input did you have into the, 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 the finished product and, and what was eventually rolled out? Yeah, I was really interested straight away when they came to me with the, with the concept because I think, you know, people talk about like, oh, athletes and all these people have a really high motivation. But that for me that's not true i think it's all about the, the little habits that they create every day for themselves in order to get them to where they need to be and i definitely be a big believer of that of doing small things well every day and kind of ticking boxes nearly and being a better player monday to tuesday to wednesday to thursday versus looking at the real bigger picture and i think people get really caught up in end goals and like big things that they want to achieve and they forget all the little steps in between so I thought this con concept of this was really relevant and I liked the fact that it was you know all about kind of your mindset towards the whole thing and they're trying to shift the mindset completely so we had, I'd say we had about an hour conversation um, about it before they kind of went ahead and kind of started plotting and planning for it but I was very passionate about the topic and I think having studied when I was in Australia and studied all this type of like you know the NLP coaching side of things and all that it was quite relevant to what i've been doing and, and the interest that i have had in mindset over the last couple of years so i um, i was i was delighted to be on board and i just felt it was very suited yeah i ticked a lot of boxes as well from 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 all sides as well so you're obviously a legal ambassador and a 20 by 20 ambassador and it's the legal chapter at the moment so it was very very relevant and timely yeah definitely it just it came at, as i said it came at the right time when you know, people needed something different to kind of take a different approach to exercise. And um, because I think over COVID as well, everyone's had that bit of extra time to maybe exercise, but also you nearly have too much time sometimes that you think you should be exercising more, but it's, and then you can kind of run yourself into the ground as well. So it was about getting that healthy balance between, you know, physical exercise being hard and also being fun and being enjoyable. Grania, would you ma notice many more people, as I have in recent times, cycling, running, walking, um, particularly during the lockdown that we had? It was it was just a really good time for people to get out and, and as you say, clear the head and try to forget about everything that we were going through, not just with COVID, but, you know, within our daily lives. Yeah, I know if a lot of families are walking, like I've, I've never I've never seen anything like it before. Um, definitely people. Um, I suppose we were left with simple pleasures in life. Um, there wasn't nothing else to do. Um, very little on television. You know, it's it's it, we're going back to basics. Yeah. Um, kids always played outside. We're always running around years ago. Um, so it, we kind of went back to that a bit, I think. And exercise was a big seemed to be a big part of that for families. 
So that was a very good, po- a positive and thing out of COVID I as well. I think what mum said actually a while ago was really interesting was like, they were like the d- generation that you grew up in wasn't, it wasn't really pushed upon you exercise. Whereas you think that now the generation, like our generation is like, it's drilled into us. Yeah. But mum's generation, maybe not as much at the time. When no, but we still were outside. We didn't have technology yeah, to see. Yeah. So we'd have automatically been on the go outside. But in a different way. And we, had, well, we walked everywhere because there was, yeah. we didn't have our car. We didn't have, you know, one family car only. So I had eight of my family. So I walked everywhere. I walked up and down to school, walked home at lunchtime. Whereas our girls, this gen- the next generation, the year generation, would get lifts or the drive themselves. Mm. So we didn't need to actually, when you think about it that way now, Sarah, you didn't, we, you, you, did, automat- you did exercise, but you didn't auto- know it. It wasn't like, whereas, whereas now this point, is kind yeah. of structured exercise, whereas before, we when, doing back in mom's time, <laughs> Back in the day, back in the day, it was like, like <laughs> um, just, they did it because they had no choice, kind of thing. But yeah, we just had to do it. Look, Ronnie, you, you, you say you're from a family of eight, so that was a busy house growing up, but you also have a, a, you've quite a busy house now since you became a mum, too. Yes, I have three girls, and we're going to be a granny in September. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, very exciting times ahead. Um, so, yeah, busy house with yeah husbands and boyfriends and friends and family and all go here all the time yeah it's lovely it's lo- it's lovely because my mom and dad thankfully are both still alive and the, there's grandkids getting like we had our third uh, baby my sister had a baby my brother's wife is expecting so it's the, it's the circle of life growing and when you become a grandparent it must be just um lovely for them you know yeah yeah well our, my our alan's mom um is going to be a great granny now it's her first great wow. grandchild so the, the, and she just lost her husband there, Mark. So it's oh, really sorry good. to hear that. Sorry yeah, to hear that. Yeah, it's very exciting. The bit, yeah, we were very, we were like, we were very upset about that. But this has given her a little something else to live for at the moment, which is very good that way. Yeah, brilliant. I think a lot of people are reflecting on, on life at the moment. Um, Grania, throughout all of this, there's a bit more time. There's a bit more thinking time, which you know makes the exercise part more critical as well, as you say, to clear the head. Sarah, I was yes. talking to to Yvonne Byrne as well um, lately, and she lost her mum and dad obviously in recent times, yeah, and now she's yeah. expecting a baby in October. So life is has its ups and downs, Grania, and it's how we cope is really, really important. Hundred percent. Yes. 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 Yeah. You, absolutely. You, yeah. There's there's good and bad. Good and bad comes out of everything, really. Absolutely. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your own life growing up and, and where you come from and, and what, you know, how was life back then? Uh, life was very simple. came from a family of eight. Um, was reared in a pub. Uh, my, my, my parents had a, um, a, bar, um, a, bar, a, a pub in Ballina. Okay. And my mother, my mother died when she was very young and she left okay. eight of us. She died at 42 and left, left eight children between the ages of two and 17. Wow. So my father reared us, but we were very close and looked out, out for each other because of that. And um, but life was simple, you know. We all we, we we had to do housework and do our jobs and um went went to school and you know it was nothing. Um, just you know. I think that also like that mum's mum passed away when she was so so young and she's such a proactive mum for us because it's probably not what you had when you were younger. Oh, 100%, yeah, so yeah. Much, she's so invested in our life and yeah. mum and dad are always there for us through absolutely everything. Yeah. So we're so lucky that yeah, you know yeah. it's kind of as you said, life kind of comes in circles. Yeah, so she's absolutely. Got yeah, that I would would have we would have taken we would have taken our parenting very serious. You know, we were like, I'm sure, not, I'm sure most, most parents do their best, but we did definitely give it, our, give it as much as we could. And I think it's because I lost my own mother quite young. So I'm very conscious of good parents and what children need. Well, Granny, you're playing an absolute blinder. Um, absolute blinder. Uh, do you mind me asking, uh, Granny, how you coped with, with, with a life event like that? Uh, I, uh, I, 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 uh, it was very difficult for us, but my father was a very good man. Never married again. Stayed at home. Um, kind of got, we we had to work hard when we were young. I mm. at fourteen we were kind of doing a lot of housekeeping and things. And but uh, my dad was a very good person. Didn't drink or didn't go out or. You know. Maybe that's why she is an obsession with the housework. <laughs> Maybe oh, my father was really fussy. Yeah, very fussy. In the she house. used to like mum used to tell us that she used to cook the dinners. Like her two younger sisters, that she basically her and few of us, and right, yeah. them we together kind of rared them as well so yeah. it was you know it would have left a huge it, it was hard but you know we've been very lucky since and I've, I've, I'm a firm believer of um, my mum looking after us ever since like we've been very lucky in life since that I, yeah. Um, yeah so we've got it you know you get it's not easy but you get in other ways I don't go around feeling sorry for myself you know I you know I kind of probably understand grief but um, um, we got it we had to we have no choice but to get on with it it wasn't Absolutely. I wouldn't have liked it yeah, I wouldn't like that. To, I wouldn't like that to happen to my children. 
You radi- so. I'd have to say you radiate positivity, Grani. It's, it's an absolute credit to you. Um, yeah, Sarah, you. so how are you uh, get, getting back to um, a bit of club training and a bit of, bit of football and looking ahead to what's coming down the tracks? How have you found all of that? And how much did you miss football? I know you had Australia as well, that experience. But how much have you missed the, the daily routine of being in a club squad and a county squad? Oh, like, yeah, like, while AFL and all that is great, like, you just love football is, you know, what I grew up doing. It is my favourite sport as such. And I think, yeah, you really miss that. I think the nicest thing about all this is that we're going back to our roots. We're going back to our clubs, where we started, and it's where we'll finish. And to be able to give that the real, I suppose, time and effort that it really deserves has been really nice. And I think in that, there's probably a bit of opportunity for change because, like, you know, normally you're coming in off the back of a county season and you're essentially probably a small bit sick of football by, by that stage and you're tired and you're kind of fatigued from the from such a long year that you're coming back into club and you're, you know, you're, you're going straight back into training after maybe a big loss or something and the motivation is probably a small bit low. Mm. So I think it, it would be a lovely idea or a gesture if you could even, you know, either start with your club and then go into the county or at least maybe give your club one day a week training with them so that you can keep that kind of morale and buzz going on in the club because there's a really great atmosphere around the town because each team has all their county players and you know they can help I suppose drive up those good standards and stuff so I'm really looking forward to it it's our first year up senior this year so it's the first time the club has ever been in senior and um, we're an amalgamation club and we have and um, we have Bunny Conlon, Balna and both areas Balna in the club so we're playing that more on Sunday so I'm really looking forward to getting started into that. I wish you well I wish you well with that when this airs you will have played so um, I hope it's a positive result for you over the weekend sir and I wish you well in that. Sarah, talk to me about the importance of the 2020 uh, 20 by 20 campaign and um, women's sport in general. And, and we, we've come a certain way, but we still have a journey to travel. How do you see the overall landscape right now? At the moment, it's an absolute pleasure to be growing up in, in an environment where there's so much change happening and that things are constantly improving. And every year you see that bit of a jump or that bit of a difference like if I was to reflect on two years ago when the 20 by 20 campaign started you know I was over in Australia and I remember seeing women in sport being like exposed a small bit and seeing small things like filter through social media but now I actually know a lot of the athletes like I know a lot about them I know and it's from across all codes whereas you know before I suppose when it was little at the start little drove really good standards in ladies football but now it's like the holistic view that 2020 have brought in and kind of exposing all women in sport has been unbelievable and it's just been you know you go up town and you like every every second person knows you know what your story is or knows that you've and um, were playing a game last week whereas before before it would be like what do you do now? And you have to tell people what you're doing, whereas people actually know now because, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is. Yeah, they follow, yeah. They follow, they're following it more now. Yeah. Yeah, we've come a, we've come a long way. Out there. It's, it's important that we still have that road to travel as well, Sarah. That it's, not, it's not the finished product by any means, but things have, have moved on significantly. Um, you mentioned Lidl as well. You've been ambassador since the sponsorship began. It's been a very powerful partnership between the LGFA and Lidl, Sarah. Yeah, definitely. The LGFA have done so much as well. And like it's it hasn't just been little like that. It's been the both the LGFA and Little combined to drive these standards and make sure that we're, you know, playing all Ireland finals in Crow Park and all that. Like that doesn't happen by little clicking their fingers that like LGFA put all them things in place and make sure that you know there's tv rights at games and all that so that's been a huge part of it as well and you know even the way you're driving social media things even doing things like this it just gets people to understand i suppose the person behind the footballer and all that i think that's um, been huge as well so you're doing so so much work it's a pity we were shut down there was such a really good synergy this year with 20 by 20 it was also the 20th anniversary of TG Carr and Lidl as well sir the first final was aired back in 2001 this would have this will be uh, all going to plan the 20th one so there's a lot, a lot of good things happening um Sarah talk to me as well about the uh, a forthcoming book um Girls Play 2 and I believe you're featured Yes um Jackie rang me when I was over in Australia and she just asked me a few questions, I suppose, you know, a snippet of um, 
my life and then what like what advice I suppose you would give to younger girls growing up if you if you could give any and on anything you've learned along the way that maybe you could help people out with that way so I'm really looking forward to seeing the book properly and she sent it out to me now so I should should have it in the next few days but it's a great again a great platform for younger younger girls to be able to look at that book and kind of say oh that's I want to be Sonia Sullivan. I want to be whoever, whoever they want to be, they can see it and, you know, can't see it, can't see it. So there we go. Absolutely. Well done. Very good. Um, yeah, we, we, we had the, the 42 had a colouring book of female sports stars. I think it was last year, wasn't it? A, a concept yeah. piece that, you know, it's great to see this happening all of the time. Grania, have you been impressed by um, the greater awareness and exposure that, that's been given to female sports and, and to ladies football in recent times? Oh, I have, yeah, yeah. And I think it's very good for younger players. It's making the younger um, generation more interested. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more attractive now. Yeah. Uh, it's cool, kind of, you know, and, and teenagers, I think, to be cool. Uh, it's, you know, it wasn't cool before. It's got kind of, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, fashionable. Yeah, fashionable, yeah. It used to be. Um, yeah, it's definitely is, Sarah. <laughs> but, um, yes, I think it's, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's very good for the, the the younger generation to see make it, it looks much more attractive now to be involved in football now or any sport for women. Yeah, the role models that they have to aspire to. Yeah. Sarah, who were your the people you looked up to and the players you looked up to um, growing up? Because in recent weeks, I've spoken to the Sue Ramsbottoms, Brenda McInespies, um the list goes on and on. Mary Jo Curran, absolute legends of the sport, and it's been absolutely brilliant to shine a light on 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 that era. Um, you know, even Yvonne talking to her about the, the Mayo era from 99 up to 03, five successive All-Ireland finals. Um, who did you aspire to? Who were your role models? I know you played a lot of soccer as well. So there was a, a mishmash of, of, of sporting heroes, I'm sure, a, along the way. Yeah, I think like mainly mine were from down the road because Diana Hoare lives um, yes. about a kilometre down the road and they won the All-Ireland final. I can't remember what year it was, but they had like a homecoming down um, just about half a mile from my house. And I remember being down there at a bonfire um, and she was up on stage speaking and there was music and there was all this and I was mesmerised. And then I had like a couple of months ago coming up and I got a phone call to the house and it was Diana Hoare ringing me to say, well done and keep up the good work that she saw that we'd won some big game. I'm like, I thought I was an absolute hero. Like when I was like, Diana Hoare is ringing our house phone. Like, yeah, right. the, 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 impact that, the impact that's left on you, Sarah, is massive. That small gesture can do so much. That's it. And you don't realise it. You don't even realise it yourself when you're even in your club team and you're training with girls who are under 14, under 16, all these girls. And I'm like, the smallest gesture from any of us older girls or senior girls can have an, ever, an everlasting impact on them. Yeah. And it could help them it could be one comment away from them deciding to stay in football or not and it could be such a small thing for you but you could just say oh you did brilliant there or keep that up keep up with the good work or pull them aside or send them a text message you never know what kind of impact you can have so I'm very conscious of that I suppose because Diane did that for me when I was younger that I could maybe I suppose share that with some other young girl and um, growing up and then other than that probably my role models would have been like David Brady and Jerry Brady and the Brady's were down the road as well so yes but um, Diane was the only female one that I distinctly remember yeah she was a phenomenal player as well um that era for Mayo 99-2000 winning all Ireland's losing narrowly in 01 and winning them back to backs again in 0203 a, a phenomenal era and you're on you're on a pretty you've a pretty good um group at the moment as well Sarah a lot of potential in that Mayo squad oh yeah yeah absolutely so much talent in that group and even when I came home at Christmas and there was new girls coming in and um, girls that I hadn't really seen too much of what would have seen small with them at minor level but I was seriously impressed and I think with their with their attitude their athleticism and uh, you know I suppose you come into the Mayo setup as a young like 16 or 17 year old and you've absolutely no fear like you don't you don't know who the player is that you're playing against you probably don't know too much about other teams so you just go in and essentially play your football you don't overthink anything so I think that's really refreshing to have them young girls filtering in and you know pushing them to push you nearly out of your space because that's what you need to drive into them higher standards all the time and but I think yeah there's an awful lot of potential in that Mayo squad. 
Uh, Sarah, it would be remiss of me to not ask you about the group that you have for the championship, which has got Tyrone and Armagh in it, and your, your familiar familiar opponents. Um, what did you think when uh, when the draw was made? Um, it brought me back to last season, I think. Um, definitely having played both teams last last season, and they were, you know, absolute fierce competitors and. The, their style of football as well is um, very competitive and they're both two really up-and-coming um, teams as well. I remember playing Tyrone and we just about got out of their live last year. It was like last minute of the game stuff. So um, I thought it was a huge challenge for us. Um, but it'll be it'll be a very competitive group, I think. And, you know, looking at all the groups, there's, you know, it, they all are very competitive. And you just would know as well with, with COVID and all that, it's it's whatever team can deal best with this change because mm. it's such a big change. And some teams are used to certain routines. People, Some players are particularly superstitious and all that. I think whatever team can deal best and just, you know, we're going to be thrown into a situation where we're all of a sudden back in training and, you know, it's like championship is going to come around really quickly, and it's like what team can be a deal best with the situation they're in. So I think um, it's anyone's game, absolutely anyone's game at the minute. Um, Gronia, I'll come back to you there. Um, uh, Sarah mentions COVID and the impact on sport and uh, and life in general, and you've come through some life experiences. And thank you for talking to us about that and sharing your experience. Uh, how how have you found all of this and um, the pandemic and and everything we've had to the changes we've had to make, the adaptations, uh, how, how have you managed yourself? Um, I suppose I found it difficult at the beginning to adjust to the changes. You couldn't go anywhere. And I actually I actually was nursing myself at the time. Okay. I've just retired there. I was worked probably two months in the COVID unit. Um, I had just happened to retire on the 1st of May. So I was first hand on the front line. So uh, I found it quite difficult when I was working. Okay. And uh, but home wise, yeah, it was there was change, it was adjustments to make. You know, you couldn't go anywhere, um, nobody could visit. But we kind of enjoyed it. We kind of went back to simpler things in life, sat in the garden, barbecues, yeah, mm. cooking. You know, simpler okay. things in life. You couldn't go anywhere. And yeah, it was absolutely. Actually, it was okay. It was fine with that. And we're used to um, dad being away a lot for work as well, and he would work in China like at least mm. fifty or sixty percent of the year. Yeah. And I think that was lovely, like to have him. Home. Home. We had him home every evening for dinner, so Brilliant. to have that time with him for us was precious. We kind of enjoyed it, yeah, from that point of view. It's a yeah. year we won't. It's a year we won't forget in a hurry. No, I know. It's yeah, it's, I think it's. I think that as well, though. It is time we'll never get back. So, like you know, we we're as well to enjoy it while it was here and be able to take the mental break from everything and take the break from sport. But obviously, we're all dying to get back to normal life as well. But at yeah. the same time, there was lots of opportunities and lovely, lovely, lovely quality time, time yeah, with your yeah, family yeah. that you just yeah, well, you'll, you'll always remember that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Gronia, happy yeah. retirement. What's next for you? What 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 are your plans? Well, it's on Instagram anyway. <laughs> Go on. We're, on we're, we're going to set up the campaign. We're going to get it running today. And it's uh, get Gra- hashtag get Gronya on Insta. So I want to get G-Bomb, this trending. G-Bomb, my word is over now. now my G-Bomb is gone off the scene very quickly. <laughs> get the G-Bomb on Twitter. Are you on Twitter, um, Gronya? No, no, nothing. No, I'm not into technology Someone at all. Someone was tweeting her as well yesterday. I saw saying uh, that G-Bomb needs um, G-Bomb. a bag of work for G <laughs> Bomb needs to um, <laughs> sure. have to do a program with RTE, so you never know. But well, the funny thing about it is, people that don't know me, um, but that actually is my personality, really. That's the way I am, really. Yeah. But people. Um, <laughs> No, don't know me that obviously I don't know. That's oh, me. the G bomb! I'm in tears yeah. here. The G, the G bomb is definitely the way to fly. Yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. the way to I fly. The now. <laughs> and Sarah, your good self. Obviously, you've got some football to attend to in the coming weeks and months. Um, all going to plan, and hopefully, uh, we get everything played. Uh, what's next uh, for you? Um, we know you've been in Australia before. What, what are the plans? Uh, any update? Plans no are still a bit up in the air for me because I just I just think that Melbourne is after going into lockdown for another yeah. six weeks, so they're going into full lockdown at the minute. So things are still a bit up in the air. And um, the signing date is officially ends the sixteenth of um, August. So I'll push it out until that date mm-hmm. and then make my decision. But at the moment, my club is at the forefront, and then Mayo, and then after that. Um, I'll see but again you never know you could sign a contract or you could not sign a contract and either way you might end up still being at home so um, it's kind of like just every day at a time for me at the minute 
Okay, okay. It's Folks, great talking. Ahead. Yes, Grania, sorry, say that again. It's very hard to plan too far ahead at the moment for anybody. In any it is. Life. It is, it really is, you know, yeah. yeah, things are, remain quite uncertain. Um, but what is very certain from talking to you guys is the bond, the unbelievable bond that you have. And it's, it's been lovely to catch up with you today. Grania, it's been lovely to virtually meet you. So ho hopefully someday we'll meet in the flesh real soon. Uh, Sarah, you look after yourself as well and we'll talk to you real soon. Sarah, before we sign off, uh, if people want to find out more about the uh, Legal Moves 20 by 20 campaign, where do they go? What do they do? It's still not too late to get involved. So you can go on to the little Instagram or you can go and um, just type in little moves um, into Google and it will come straight up there and fill in the questionnaire and get started from there. And you have loads of resources. You'll have classes for beginners, intermediate recipes, you name it. It's on it. So um, check it out. And it'll be, it's only live until the end of October. So make sure okay. to get on board. Okay, so time is of the essence. Very good. Uh, Sarah Rowe and Mum Grania, the G-bomb, uh, my special guest today. Thanks for coming on, folks. Great to talk Thank to you. Thank you Thanks, for having Jackie. us. Bye. Thank you for having us.